Hi, my name is Nathaniel, I'm from Wine Market, and today we're spending 60 seconds with legendary winemaker Jonathan Hesketh. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me. So, do you remember the moment when you first fell in love with wine? Um, you know, I guess being brought up in the industry, for me, it's been a bit more of an evolution, so there probably wasn't one bolt out of the blue, but um, probably a series of lots of moments. But um, it's something that I actually tried to run away from at one point and ended up running straight back to it. So, probably the moment I left it was the moment I fell in love with it. <laughs> <laughs> and of all the wines you've had the opportunity to try, what would be the most significant wine you've ever had? Um, probably the first wine we bottled on one hand because it was the first time we put our name on a label, um, and that was, I guess, a special moment for us. But then the cost of some sort of startlingly good European and Australian wines that I've tried in the past, which also stand out. Um, but probably I wouldn't want to want to single it down to wine. So yeah. If you weren't a winemaker, what do you think you'd do? Um, well, I, I'd like I'd fly. Um, I have to do a lot of it with, with work, and wouldn't have minded being a fighter pilot as a dream as a kid. But um, I'm not smart enough for that. So uh, it's a lot safer to make wine, I think, and probably more more ground. Yeah. And when you're not drinking your own wine, mm. what do you drink? Um, well, a lot of beer, because it, makes, it takes a lot of beer to make great wine. Um, but, uh, you know, we like to drink all sorts of wine from all over the world, so, um, but beer and other people's wine are actually. And uh, what's the most rewarding part of winemaking? Um, I think definitely seeing your wine go from grape into glass and then seeing how it evolves in bottle. Um, for me, the rewarding bit is seeing it. It, a wine is like going nurturing a child, where it starts off um, as grapes and ends up on the table. and seeing how it evolves once it's in bottle because it wines have a life and they, they change as they get older and uh, just seeing it go through that process and watching it is probably the most rewarding part of it. Now you've had the opportunity to work all around the world, many different wine making regions, what would have been your favourite? Um, there were three that stand out for me, um, Burgundy because as a, as a kid when I was nine we lived there for a year and I've got many fond formative memories from that, came back to Australia speaking English with a French accent so that, that had a big, big impact on my life. Um, I think Central Otago and New Zealand for the sheer beauty of it, uh, they make great Pinot there too and it's just a spectacular part of the world. But for me, probably my favourite one would be McLaren Vale because Mediterranean climate, beautiful beaches, great people and great wines and I spend a lot of time there and it's, it's probably the most special. And uh, from all the wines that you've made, what's yeah. the wine that you're most proud of? Um, look, there are a few that I think have stood out but the one for me is probably the sparkling. Um, the proposition because it's unique in terms of how it's made and it's difficult to make but you get a great result with the wine um, being a sweater style with a dry finish and that's really due to I guess my brother's ingenuity and in coming up with something that's different and it's difficult to make but it's unique and I think there's not many um, uh, you know winemakers out there that can say they've got a you know, you know fairly unique wine in their in their state. so for those reasons it's probably sparkling. Brilliant. And if you could have a drink with anyone in history, who would you most like to drink with? Um, probably myself in 50 years, so I can actually look back and see what's going to happen. Um, and that'd be cheating though. Um, uh, yeah, and I have to have one to answer that. No, I'll stick with that. Excellent. And what do you want people to experience when they try Hesketh wines? Um, I mean, for us, the whole thing is wines to be drunk and enjoyed. Uh, we, we make our wines not with the intention of having it stand out from a lineup or to be the biggest or the largest. It's more about people seeing the bottom of the bottle and wanting some more. So. Um, you know, quality is absolutely the, the one fundamental in wine you can't you can't miss. Uh, but for me, it's also that drinking enjoyment and that you know the ability for someone to see the bottom of our bottle and then want to open another one because it was just delicious. And that for me is what we wanted to get out of it. Yeah. And where do you see the uh, future of Hesketh wines here? Um, look, we we do a few eclectic things out of Europe, and I certainly see us doing more interesting and exciting things out of other parts of the world, just so that. Um, I guess people who drink our wines can go on the journey with us and explore and discover new things. So um, we continue to focus obviously on the things we do at home because um, they're closer and that is probably the bulk of what we do but we'll continue to explore some interesting wild things from around the world just to you know have a bit of fun and do a bit of journey and much because we can um, and hopefully that translates to people who drink our wines to being able to follow that journey as well and discover something new too. So yeah that's what we're going to do. Well thank you for joining us. Thanks very much. Thank you.